Hi, some of our beginning algebra students have asked me to talk a little bit more about how you graph with my math lab, and this time use only the traditional method, okay? No graphing calculators. We're going to use the traditional method. You find two points, you graph the line. That's exactly what we're going to do with several of these lines in the homework. Okay, here's our first one x minus y equals 4. I'm going to find two points by making a t-table. I'm going to make an x and a y and a kind of a t-looking thing between them. Now, I don't have to use intercepts, but they can be the easiest points to find when you have a line like this, a line that's in standard form which is what this is called when the x and the y term are together on the same side of the equal sign. Right, so the way I find intercepts is I put a 0 here and a 0 here, and then I calculate, well, what is y when x equals 0? So I come over here and I substitute a 0 for x because 0 is in the x column and I say 0 minus y equals 4, which means negative y equals 4. I, I divide both sides by negative 1, and that gives me y equals negative 4. Okay, now, that's one point. What about the other one? Well, let's do it. If y is 0, what is x? All right, I'll have x minus 0 equals 4, which means x equals 4. Whoops, there's stuff written there. Which means x equals 4. That was quick and dirty. Now I have two points. That was negative 4. I now have two points, the point 0, negative 4, and the point 4, 0. I'm going to graph them. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to increase the size of the graph so I can see better. And I'm going to find the point 0, negative 4. Let me write that a little more clearly so you can see it. I've got the point 0, negative 4, and I have the point 4, 0. Okay, so now I'm going to get the graphing tool, the line tool. I'm going to go to 0, negative 4, which is this point, and I'm going to click. Then I'm going to the point 4, 0. This can be tricky until you get used to it. Here's the point 4, 0. Click. Now I have a line. Now I click Save. Now I check my answer, and I'm told, nice work. So good. I'm done with this point. If you want to see that again, you can always start the, the uh, recording over. Let's go to the next problem. y equals 1 half x minus 1. This is in, this line is written in slope intercept form. Again, I'm going to make a t table. Now, notice that the instructions say graph the equation, they don't say find the intercepts. So, I don't have to use this 0, 0 method. Instead, I'm just going to find any old points that are convenient. The most convenient points to find are points that have 0 for the x-coordinate and 2 for the x-coordinate. This, In this problem, a 2 is a really good number because if I multiply 2 by 1 half, I can cancel out that 2 and get rid of my fractions. But here, watch what happens. 
the first one. Y equals one half times zero minus one because X is zero. One half times zero is zero. So I'll have zero minus one, which is negative one. So I put a negative one in here and now I have my first point. But I need to find my second point. I'll have y equals one half times two minus one. Now what is that? That's one half times two over one. Two and two over one are the same thing. But whenever you multiply a whole number times a fraction, it's much better to change the whole number into a fraction. Why is that? Let me subtract my one before I forget. Because I multiply the tops together, I multiply the bottoms together, and I'll get two over two. And I bring down my minus one so I won't forget it. Now what is two over two? Two over two is one. So I'll have one minus one, which is zero. So if x is two, y is zero. Now I have two easy points I can graph. The point zero, negative one, and the point two, zero, whoop, zero. Now remember, there are an infinite number of points on any line. These are the only two I happen to know. I would not live long enough to find an infinite number of points. All right, so I go over here. I click on the magnifying glass. I choose medium, which is really as large as it gets. If you choose maximize, the extra area gets larger, but the grid itself does not. So I prefer medium there. All right, the first point I'm going to graph is 0, negative 1. I choose the line tool. I go to 0, negative 1, and I hit click. Then I go to 2, 0, which is kind of hard, so concentrate. There's 2, 0, click. Now I have a line. I save it. I check it. And I'm told, nice work. I was right. Now let's try another problem. How about y equals negative 5x? Let me write it down. y equals negative 5x. I make an x and a y table. And I choose two convenient numbers two easily graphed numbers for x. Whenever your line is in slope-intercept form, it's much easier to just choose easy numbers for x. Since I need two points, I'll choose two easy numbers. How about, I don't know, how about 0 and 1? Seems easy to me. All right here, I'll have y equals negative 5 times 0 if x is 0. That will be negative 5 times 0, which is 0. So the point 0, 0 will be one of my points. That's the very center of the grid. Now let's try y equals negative 5 times 1. That will be negative 5. So the point 1, negative 5, will also be one of my points. Let me list them. I'll have the point 0, 0, and I'll have the point 1, negative 5. Let's graph them. I go to the magnifying glass. I click it. I go to medium. I go to the line tool. I go to 0, 0, which is this point right there in the middle. Now I go to the point 1, negative 5. This is admittedly difficult. There you go. 
click OK. Now I save, I check, nice work. Let's move on. y equals negative 2. Notice there's not an x here. Hmm, what could that mean? Well, I know what it means, but we're going to find out. y equals negative 2 with no x means that y must always equal negative 2, and x can equal anything it wants. So I'll make an x and a y table. x must be negative 2, negative 2. And I choose some x's, some easy x's, to go along with it. How about x equals 0 and x equals 4? Now I have two points, 0, negative 2, and 4, negative 2. Let's go to the magnifying glass, click medium, then click the line tool. I'm going to click 0, negative 2, click. Then I'm going to go over to 4, negative 2, and hit click. Now I've got my line, I save it, I check it. Good job! What's next? Ah, that's one of the hard ones. Even people who like graphing calculators will probably not be able to graph that on their graphing calculator unless they have a special app on the calculator. We're going to do this the old-fashioned way with no apps and no calculator. Okay, here I go. If I have x plus 3 equals 0, I'm going to make an x and a y table. Now this is very strange. I have to come up with x plus 3 equals 0, a number plus 3 equals 0. Well, it's much easier if you solve for x. Subtract 3 from both sides, you'll have x equals negative 3. And what this is is a line where x must always equal negative 3. So I'll put a negative 3 in for x and a negative 3 in for x, and then I'll put any easy numbers I like in for y. How about 0 and 4? No problem. Okay, now we're going to graph those points. All right, I'm going to have negative 3, 0. I forgot to write my points. Let me do that. Negative 3, comma, 0, and negative 3, comma, 4. Those are my two points. So now, got the line, I am going to negative 3, x is negative 3, y is 0, click, and negative 3, 4. So x is negative 3, and y is 4, click. Now I've got a line, I save my line, I check, yes. This is the vertical line, x equals negative 3. What else is waiting for us? Negative 2y equals 8. Okay. Here we have negative 2y equals 8. Notice there's not an x. Okay, solve for y. Divide both sides by negative 2, 
and you will have y equals 8 over negative 2, so y equals negative 4. This is going to be the line y equals negative 4. I make an x and a y table. Now remember, if you have a line that says y equals negative 4 and there's no x in it, that means you have a line where y must always equal negative 4. And x can equal anything. So if x can equal anything, choose two easy points. 0 and anything you want. How about 6? So that will give us the point 0, negative 4, and 6, negative 4. Now let's graph those two points, plot those two points. All right. Now 0, negative 4 is going to be right here. And 6, negative 4, is going to be right here. Click. Notice that you have to graph two lines, or plot two points, rather. You have to plot two points to get your line. Now it's freestanding. Go down to Save if you like it. Click. Now check your answer. Nice work. I wonder what this final question is. All right, it's another one of those X problems. I'm going to leave that one up to you. No, I won't. That would be too mean. OK, I'll do it. Here we have the equation X plus 2 equals 10. No Y. It's in the line chapter, the line section, the straight line section, but there's no y. You have to have an x and y to graph a line, right? Yes, you do. But why isn't y mentioned here? Because y can be anything. x is going to be held to a particular number. So let's solve for x to find out what that number is. Subtract 2, subtract 2 and I will have x equals 8. x is going to be held to 8. So let's make an x and a y table. I want two points, so I'll put 8 twice. And then, since y can be anything, I will choose convenient, easy numbers like 0 and 4. That will give me the point 8, 0, and the point 8, 4. How did I come up with 0 and 4? I made them up. I made them up because they can be anything, so why not 0 and 4? x, on the other hand, always has to be 8. So let's graph these two points. Hourglass, medium, line tool. First point is 8, 0. Second point is 8, 4. Now that I've clicked on my second point, I have a freestanding line. I save it. I check it. Fantastic. I've gotten these right, and now so can you. And notice I never used a graphing calculator. All I used was the old-fashioned method of finding points. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.